Charlie. We are here to give you an RV tour today, but we wanted to start out telling you a little bit about ourselves and the rig that we're in. We've lived full time in our RV for about a year and a half now. Some of that time we've been stationary and some of it we've been on the road. We have a Keystone Montana 2017 370 MBR. MH BR? 370 BR. <laughs> okay. It's uh, It gets a little confusing. Um, what that stands for is we have technically a bonus room in the mid bunk area. So a lot of people have a mid bunk with a loft on, on top. We just have the bonus room. So we have just consistently challenged the idea that fifth wheels are just for camping. They are so much more than that and they unlock so much opportunity for people in different ways. So we just always invite people to reevaluate their lives and see if living in an RV can actually open up opportunities for them in different areas. And as you'll see during the tour of our trailer, you'll see that, um, like Emily said, there's some things you can do to really change the trailer to make it not feel like a camping trailer. Uh, you'll see that this is our house. This is where we live. This is where we've lived for over a year and a half. It's where I work, it's where she uh, homeschools the kids and does her work as well. Uh, and the best part about it and what we love, I think the most, is that it can be anywhere. We have uh, both grown up in the Northwest, but um, over the past year we've been able to travel through um, the more of the Northwest and we're currently in Utah and we're headed even further south. So it really does present a lot of great opportunities as well as just a simpler way of living. Yeah, and also just one thing to note, we have made a lot of changes to our RV and we're not um, encouraging everyone to do this. You'll find your own balance of what works for you. But we are gonna share five different quick, easy products that you can install in your RV to make it a little bit more comfortable, whether you're camping or you're living in it full time. So we'll have those linked below in our Amazon store. But shall we get to the tour? Show yeah. them all the good stuff. Let's show them. All right. So here we are at the front door. And the first thing I want to show you, this is a product by Camco. And it is a bar that you attach to your screen door. It just makes it so easy to open and close the door. So we will link that. Like we said, there are a lot of changes we've done to the trailer. Uh, one thing that we've never really believed in is having a dining room table. This has been a really tricky spot for us. Uh, you can see, I can put a clip in of what this looked like when we originally got the trailer. It just had your standard dinette with four chairs and it just wasn't working for us. So we took that out and this is a table that I built. Uh, it's really simple. There aren't a lot of uh, options for this. So I had to build something custom. But most of it started with uh, a, a cabinet that we already had, and I created a new top. So I did a custom top for it at a butcher block, and then I added this drawer, which is just kind of a tech drawer. It has chargers in here, so all of our charging cables, batteries, everything uh, lives inside this drawer. Uh, so you can see it's uh, a mess, but it's also organized and out of the way. And it's also on double extension guides, so you can have it out all the way, but then you can also push it all the way back. That way when you're sitting on the table, it, uh, you don't hit your knees on it. Uh, there's some shoe storage here and just kind of a catch-all. And as you can tell, Emily likes plants, so she has her plants up here on top. And then we even have an uh, outlet here for a bulb when we're not getting a lot of sun, especially up in the northwest we can plug that bulb in and we can give the plant some sun. So that's our desk. And then I guess we can talk about the cabinetry. Uh, this is actually um, what I think is one of the most unique parts about our trailer. Uh, my background is in custom cabinetry. And what we wanted to do in doing our trailer is that we didn't want to just spray a latex paint on the, on the cabinets as Many people know the cabinets are really tricky in these trailers because they can be kind of lower quality and we wanted to preserve what we had. So this paint is actually a conversion varnish product. It's not a latex, it's a two part mixture and it has a hardener in it. So it's much more like what you would spray on a car in that it has that hardener. So we did that on these cabinets and it's been really, really good. Yeah, it actually has preserved the cabinets. We've lived in the trailer 
uh, for over a year and a half, rocking and rolling down the road, and uh, also having two young kids, and it really doesn't show anywhere. As you can see, we also put on the custom hardware um, to match. And then if you'll notice that the appliances aren't what you would normally see. Um, we originally had a um, originally had your standard propane electric fridge, and we took that out. And this was this is a hair fridge, H A I E R, and we actually got it from Costco.com, and it's a stainless fridge. But um, I have in the past done some vinyl wrapping with automotive, so what we end, what I end up doing is this is a satin white vinyl wrap by 3M, and it's automotive grade, so. It's very resilient, it's been a great product, it's really easy to work with, so that's how we were able to swap the color on that. And then we also did the microwave and the oven at the same time. Uh, we swapped out the faucet while we are at it. This is a residential faucet. We have a um, drinking filter under it as well, so we can make sure we're drinking good water. Uh, but that's a big tip that we have as well, is that with your fixtures, a lot of the fixtures that they have in these trailers are very much geared towards um, just weekend warriors, they're not really meant to take a lot of wear. So what you can do is you can swap those fixtures out. They're nothing special, the connections are the same as in a house, so you can go ahead and put really any fixture you want in as long as it's the same configuration. And that way you don't have to worry about wear and tear and this is going to last longer than the trailer. So, Do you want to show them our next product on the sink? This is number two on our list. This was something that Emily picked up. Um, as you know, the, we have inserts for inside of the sink here, but what we didn't like about them is they're heavy and they're kind of in the way, and when you don't want them, it's a lot to get them out of the way. So Emily found this, and it's it's actually really great. You can pull it out of the way. It's really lightweight. Uh, most of the time we have it over to the side, but if you want to rinse lettuce, or if you want to uh, we even you know do some cutting on it, uh, it's a really great uh, item that we've added just to give us a little more working space because the counters are kind of, there isn't a lot of them, so this just gives us a little more space to work with. And it's imper it's heat resistant too, so you can set a hot pan on it. You can, so that way if you're worried about the countertops, you can just put that hot pan right on top of it. Um, so that's the kitchen, I don't think there's yeah. anything else. We've got our fruit baskets over here, those are a popular, popular uh, request, so those are in our Amazon store as well. You want to show them your favorite? Yeah, this I Charlie's guess this is, uh, this is number three on the list. Um, so this was a cabinet I really struggled with, mostly because uh, not all rigs, but some, um, they don't have any sort of a lift on these. So when you open these, they like to just slam back shut. So I actually added a cable stay. Uh, and I, it's a, I added a hinge that um, you can leave the door anywhere you want. And the best part about it is that now that it's open, we can actually use this space. So what we did, uh, a struggle we had was with all of our spices, where to put them, and we found this on Amazon, and it's it's the spice rack. So the spice rack, it just drops out of here. Um, you can grab what you want, and we added these little IKEA puck lights to that as well. These are battery powered, and we use Amazon rechargeable batteries in these, and so we just swap them out. They generally last a couple months. Um, but yeah, when you open this up, you can pull your spices out, use what you need, and then put it up and out of the way, and close it up. So that's been a really, really big improvement. We struggled with that space for a long time. And we can move on to um, to the pantry. And this was another really big struggle for us uh, was just this cabinet as a whole because you have the fireplace here and then behind the fireplace is just an open void. So one thing that we did is when we were doing the renovation, I noticed that there was some space, some dead space behind the fireplace. So we have a, a Sony sound bar and we have remote speakers back behind, but we actually have a subwoofer that we stuck back there as well. So the subwoofer for our system is back behind the fireplace. There's already a power plug, so it was really, really easy to set up. And then as far as the TV is concerned, um, if you're not aware, and I can insert another picture of, of what this typically looks like, um, on your typical fifth wheel or just RVs in general, they put a center division behind where the TV is gonna go, and that's just, they bolt the TVs directly to it. Um, and then typically you'll have an articulating mount that allows you to pull that TV out of the way and then reach behind, but it's really awkward. So after we lived in the trailer for a little while and we kind of thought about it, and what I ended up coming up with is there's actually a handle here and then a latch as well, and you'll see why there's a latch. 
So we just pull that handle and now you can see that we have usable space behind the TV. So I installed some shelving and then as far as how I did it, it was really simple. Um, this is just some half inch plywood that I painted white and then I actually put bolts directly into the TV, um, into the mount pieces. So there is no TV mount, it just bolts straight through the back of the plywood. And then I used four um, 110 degree concealed hinges that you would see within a cabinet uh, in your home. So real standard stuff, it wasn't too complicated. And then when you're all done, um, as you can see, we have another IKEA puck light in there just so you can, uh, so you can access, so you can see what you're accessing. And then once you're all done, yes. so we have a hole going down for the components. And once you're all done getting your food or whatever you want, uh, it's really important to make sure you get this shut. And on moving day as well, we added a latch so that this doesn't swing open. So it's a nice firm, it's not going to go anywhere while you're traveling. And uh, so that was a, a must for us once we got it all built. All right, so now we are in the main living space of the house. I feel like we should measure it. We'll measure the distance ap across so you can get a feel um, of how big it is and we'll put it on the screen. But we have this couch from Ikea. It's a super comfortable couch. I am all about things that are wipeable with small children. You can see it's already got messes on it since this morning. Under the couch we have toys for the kids. There's one way back there. Anyways, I like to talk to people a lot about toys and toy storage and RVs for kids. So they don't need a lot. They don't really need any battery operated toys. You can keep it really simple. Um, so I have building toys in the living room. We have a basket down here with diapers and wipes for our littlest. And yeah, this space is great. We also have a sofa table back here of sorts. It's really just a two by four, but we have outlets inserted there so we can charge our phones, set a drink down, small places. You just need a place to put something. So that's a really great area. Now going on over to our girls area. So they eat here, they do school here, they play here. It's a great space. This is an Ikea table. Um, I painted it and put epoxy on it and painted these fun little designs for the girls. It has storage in here. So we have coloring books and workbooks, colored pencils. We have household things up here. So we have um, laminator and um, things for school, nuts and bolts and screws for the walls, um, board games, and I think there might even be some backup food storage there. So, and then over here, we have my white couch, which a lot of people are like, wait, how do you have a white couch in a small space with kids? Well, um, this is from Ikea. It's the Valentuna line, and it's super durable. And I just clean it with um, Go Clean Co. You should follow them on Instagram. They give great cleaning tips. So I clean it with Tide, and it washes up really well. This is Brody and his favorite pillow. Brody, can you say hi? Can you say hi, Brody? Huh? Um, I think Brody knows he blends into that pillow. So, um, as you can see here, there's a zipper and this pulls out. So this effectively folds out into a twin bed. We'll insert a clip so you can see what that looks like. Um, it's actually really comfortable. I lovingly call it the infirmary because usually it's one of us is not feeling well and we sleep out here. All right, so now we walk into the girls' room. And down here, we originally had a um, jackknife sofa, but we took that out and created more play space. So the girls have all of their toys there. And this is a Sharpie mural that I did for the girls. Over here we have a um, toddler size bed. So this is a crib size mattress. And we have baskets underneath for shoes and socks and things like that. I've got some books. 
Um, this is a baby doll high chair. Something that is so great for tiny living is this Hatch nursery clock. So that tells our girls when to go to sleep and all of that. This is the storage up here. So all of the girls' clothes are in here. Up above, we have alternate toys, life jackets, backup diapers and things. We also added this curtain rod, which has been really great to have all of the fun little girl things, but not in the way and not taking up storage space. One of our favorite things in the RV is these magnetic door catches. So we've got the room all decorated. We love our princess dresses and this works really well for us. The bed is on wheels. So when we pull the slide in, the bed goes into the slide. Brody. Come on out. <laughs> and that's it. That's our girls' room. And moving on to the rest of the trailer, you'll notice uh, a couple more things. Uh, one, if you haven't noticed already, the walls are not brown. We can, uh, I'll put another picture on the screen of what color the walls were. They kind of were a tan, uh, a tan color, and also there was brown everywhere. So you'll, you'll catch on to that. So. I went through and I painted all of the walls. Uh, they're all white now. And I'll go through in a later video, I'll go through more detail as to what that process looks like. Uh, Emily picked out this vinyl uh, applique. So we these are actually die cut, so it's a really nice piece and it was easy to lay out. Um, wrapping and just doing uh, wallpaper in general can be really, really difficult inside of a trailer like this for two reasons. One, it's because nothing is square because it's meant to move down the road. And then secondly, because we've had issues with adhesion to the, the wall even after we've put our own paint on there. So later in another video, we can talk a little more about what this, uh, what this took. So moving on down to the closet, I'm not sure how easy this is gonna be to show you. Um, but this is actually a closet that we redid. You'll notice that there is a Dyson vacuum in the closet and there is a charger in the closet. So I actually moved a, an outlet down there. So we have the capability of having a place to store our vacuum. We don't really sweep, we vacuum. So that's where we store that as, long, as well as uh, the parts for it and some rags. And then in this top cabinet, we um, have our control panel, just like any other RV. But this is where I also have our internet set up. So here's our uh, our modem and router, as well as the SimpliSafe. And then I have a, um, this is for the temperatures. I have sensors throughout the rig just to see what our basement temperature is, what the temperature is in the girls' room, things like that. So it just gives us like, some good metrics as to um, when we're heating in cold temperatures, uh, we know what we want to do. Um, as you can tell, this was also painted, so it really makes this look a lot cleaner. Um, if you know me, I have everything labeled to make sure everything's in the right spot. Um, we do have onboard generator as well, uh, even though we really haven't used it at all. So um, that is it. And then this cable you see along the ceiling is just for my external uh, LTE antennas, which is another video I'll be doing in the future. All right, so now we're coming up the stairs into our bathroom. This is a pretty small space, but it works really well for us. We took out the big glass shower door and put in a rolling shower door. So this lets a lot more natural light into this space. We love that. This medicine cabinet has everything in it that we need for daily use. We have additional things hidden over here. We've got all of our, it's a porcelain toilet. And this is a bathtub that we use for the girls. It's collapsible. The skylight is really nice. My husband is just about 6'4", and he fits in here just fine. We, uh, we painted the cabinets and replaced the faucet and added this fun wallpaper. 
And now moving on to the bedroom, this has probably been one of the more difficult spaces for us just because we've demanded a lot of it. Uh, not only is it a bedroom, it's also my office, it's also the laundry room. So I'm gonna go through a couple of the things that we've done to make this space um, work better for us and make it more functional. So the first one you'll notice is that the bed itself, typically the beds in these trailers, face east to west. So you're gonna have the head of the bed on um, inside the slide and then you'll have the foot down here. But for us, you, you can notice that I have a desk here and so for me working it was really difficult because before the back of the mattress would be right behind my seat. So I, would, I couldn't even scoot the chair out. So it was really, really awkward. So one of our favorite things we've done is we rotated the queen mattress into the slide. So it actually acts like more of a day bed during the day and it's been a really really big difference for us um we love our headboard and i believe that's from urban outfitters and it's a been a really nice piece really good quality as well so that's the big change we made and the next big change is going to be the closet so this is something that i struggled with for a really long time i did, did a couple different designs and ultimately, this is what I came up with. Um, kind of feels like a big reveal of some sort. But um, we have, typically you would have big bypassing sliding doors and that wouldn't work for us. So I took those out when we first got the trailer and then thought of this design. This is what I came up with. So these are, um, this is our closet. We have a nice bank of drawers. We have some long storage, long hanging storage over on this far side. So it goes all the way from the floor to the ceiling. And um, it's been really great for Emily, for her dresses and for longer items. Um, we do have a pull out here as well. So this is um, pretty empty. We don't have a lot of stuff, but this has been great uh, just for odds and ends to keep them stored here. Um, and we also do have this Splendid um, washer and dryer which actually have been working really great for us. We've had zero issues since we moved into the trailer with these, and so they've been a really great addition. Um, we have hanging storage, and then also there is one more cabinet over here, and this is just where we keep the soap and everything for doing the And there's laundry. access, right, below? Of course, yeah, that's actually, this cabinet was very intentional, and this is where the design started, was because if you know these trailers, you know if it has a washer and dryer, um, your drain hookup, or your drain pipe is gonna run right down here. So this cabinet actually comes apart. There's a false bottom and a false back that if I ever have to clear a clog or if there's ever a leak, I can still access back there. And of course you can still pull these um, out of the cabinet as well. Yeah, so when you first get the trailer, um, what the, I think their intention is that you have the washer on this side because that's where the piping is. And then there's an outlet over on the uh, driver side of the trailer for the dryer. And that really, that configuration was really awkward. It didn't work for us. Um, so I ended up putting the vent for the uh, dryer out the dr passenger side of the trailer. Um, I, it's a really hard thing to figure out. I actually talked directly with the manufacturer. They weren't able to give me any good direction um, with that. So ultimately what I, what I ended up doing is I realized that in this wall, the walls themselves are framed with, framed with steel studs. That being the case, I just used a magnet and some masking tape and I mapped out where all of the steel studs were and then um, very, very carefully drilled the four inch hole in the side of the trailer. Um, you can, uh, Emily can vouch for how nervous I was and how much I didn't want to do that, but we also didn't want to be going to laundry mats. So that was our, that was our, um, our consolation. And this may be hard to see, but this is the desk. So this is where I do all of my work and it's actually a really great space. Um, it is a drop leaf, so it's from Ikea. We can drop this out of the way, but honestly, since we changed the configuration of the bed, we really haven't dropped this very often. We typically leave it where it's at. Um, another thing we did is, if you'll notice the toe kick down below, this is traditionally uh, a square. And what I did is I put a bevel on it when I rebuilt it, so that it's more of a, a comfortable spot for your feet. So that was a big change that I made as well. And it's all magnetic too. The whole, all that toe kick comes off. And if you need to address any of the plumbing that's hidden in that toe kick, you can do that. And then as far as this desk is concerned, um, when I first started working from home, it was really difficult because at my office in Seattle, uh, I actually had a sit, sit stand desk so I could adjust it. 
And after a few months of working here um, at this desk, I really missed it. And also it's kind of a small space. Um, so I ended up putting in uh, a second TV mount up higher, which Emily likes to hide with this picture. But you'll notice there is a second mount up here higher. Um, and so I'll, uh, in I'll input a video um, right after this of what that looks like. But I, what I can do is you can actually grab the TV and you can hook it up higher. And then I have a keyboard riser so that I can stand here and do work and just get a little bit of a break during the day uh, from having to sit. So that's been a really nice addition for us as well. Yeah. Um, back here, we have all my jewelry hanging. We have yet another um, magnetic catch. There's Brody. He follows me everywhere. Hi, Brody. Um, we have new carpet in this bedroom. So when we gutted the closet and put in the um, drawers, we wanted new carpet. And so we've done that. Um, another vinyl moment here. This is vinyl finish. So, um, something to consider. It's a really great material. You don't have to chase chips and your finish is perfect. So we did some DIY leather poles. This is a super lightweight design. Yeah. So we can go down the road. It can flex, it can move and it still works great every time we park. That was something we had to be really careful with because we do know that these are manufactured to have weight in certain areas. So for us, um, in designing this, I made sure to use really light plywood. Um, I don't have plywood or any support where it doesn't need to be. And, and ultimately, that's kind of why you know we use the vinyl wrapping on the faces and the leather poles. We were just trying to keep it as light as possible. Um, we know we took a lot of weight out of the trailer when we did the work. Uh, but we just wanted to make sure we weren't overloading ourselves and we've checked the scales. Everything's great still So we don't have to worry about that and um, but Let us know in the comments if you want a walkthrough on how Charlie designed this yeah. and um, Just some considerations on how to do it yourself. Yeah, it's it, it, as you know You know, these are these aren't designed by the manufacturers to live in full-time and we are fully aware of that And that's why what from when we first got this trailer we knew that we would need to make some changes. So this was a really big change and since making it we have not regretted it. I know it's really hard to see a nice uh, finished wood piece that came with your trailer and you think man this thing's only a few years old and we're tearing this out but ultimately it was worth the level of happiness we've gained just by having an efficient space up here because before as you know you know it's it's two doors there's really no shelving there's no drawers there's nothing uh, originally there was this very very small dresser here with some really shallow drawers it was just completely not usable and there was a tv cabinet up above um i'm going to scatter some of those pictures throughout the the video here so you'll kind of see where we started at but um that's the bedroom all right so that's it um let us know if you have any questions uh, follow us on all of our social media, especially here on YouTube. You want to tell them about what we're going to do? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're new to YouTube and this is kind of our, our first, this is our first video and we have a lot to learn. But what we really want to do is we want to go back. I know that was a very high level review, but we really want to go back and talk room by room how we did certain things because we know that everybody's going to have questions about that. So that's our plan for YouTube so far. And then we do have uh, some plans for, uh, really big plans for the coming year. Um, we're, we're looking to uh, do another trailer. So uh, if you like what you see, let us know because uh, we will be selling the trailer shortly. Um, but there's still a few things we want to get taken care of before we do that. But yeah, in the next year, we're, we're looking to do it again. So uh, make sure you uh, like this video. Make sure you subscribe. We're on Instagram. Uh, that's where we've been for most of our journey so far, and now we're adding YouTube. We just really would love if you would come along the journey with us. We have definitely gotten the RV bug, and we're here to stick with it, and we're here to get to know more of you. And with our plans for 2021, we would love to get your ideas and feedback and understand more of what you want to see and what we can help you with, because we all have something different that we need from this, and we just want to be of service to you. So at the end of the day, that's always what we say is we're here for you. If you have questions, Instagram is a great place to ask those. We have an awesome community over there. And um, yeah, we, we're just so grateful and excited to share more. 
If you have any questions as far as a product you saw, something, uh, you know, if it's our faucet or the door pulls, whatever it might be, we've tried our best to add as much as of those products as possible to our Amazon store. So if you look at below in the description, you'll see a link and it'll be a link to our store on Amazon. As you know, anything you see in there, we do get a small portion of that, but that really and just- And we thank you. And that really just <laughs> helps us out um, with being able to continue doing this because that's what we're passionate about. We really want to make this work. So make sure you check out those items down below. And let us know what room you want us to show you first when we do our renovation tour. Do you want details on our kitchen? Do you want details on our bedroom? Um, what, what do you need to know? What can we share with you? So thanks again, everyone. All right, thank you. Bye.